is this sigma with this sigma, so we give it a subscript, sigma sub x bar. And that I tell, I tell this has a special name. It's called the SEM, which stands for the standard error of the mean, because it represents how much in reality, are you going to deviate from the ideal number? The ideal number is 4.5, but in reality, you get a 4.8 sometimes, you get a 3.6 other times. It's going to deviate. The standard error of the mean, or the SEM, is that quantity. And I think I told you last time we're going to spend a few minutes, if we have time today, discussing it. It's the only last theoretical part of the chapter, is that this formula is sigma over n, which is the only new thing about chapter 7 that we haven't seen yet. And uh, we're going to, maybe not today, but we're going to discuss again why this formula makes sense. That's an important theoretical part of the chapter. But the fact is, if you want to predict, now again, what does this stand for? It says, if you have a whole bunch of averages, like Nikki had, I think, 4.4 and 4.6 and 3.8 and 6.2 and 6.0 and 2.6 and 3.8 and 4.4. If you do this a thousand times and measure the spread among these numbers, remember this, the standard deviation represents the spread. What is the spread among the averages? Well, I told you to do it two ways. I told you to do it by taking 287 over 5, doing it, I'm not sure if I told you this, but this comes out to 1.28. But what if you didn't have a fancy form book? You know, what if you didn't have a formula and you just wanted to know what is the spread among the averages? So you plug those numbers into the standard deviation like Nakia did. And what did you get? Instead of 1.28, what did you get? You got exactly the same as to make it 1.27, 1.28. The point is if you do it physically you get with a large enough number of numbers, the theory is going to turn out to be true. Now, could you have predicted that it comes out to 1.28? No. But you could, what you should have been able to predict that this answer here got to be lower than this answer here because this answer here goes from zero to nine, each number exactly equal chance of happening, and the spread is quantified at 2.87. This situation, even though theoretically the numbers go from zero to nine, but in reality, most of the numbers go from here to here, like between three and six is the great bulk of the numbers, so it's really much more contracted, much more or less of a range, and therefore the spread should be lower than 2.87. How much lower? It depends upon the sample sizes we'll probably have to explain after the break. I don't think we have time today, but we'll see. So, but the fact is that little formula tells you how much spread you have. But once you have this picture, it's now a relatively easy matter, if you know chapter 6, to actually answer the question by the Z method. So the question is, how many X bars? It's just a thing like anything else in chapter 6. It's just a random variable. How many X bars are bigger than 5.7? How do we solve it in chapter six? We have a bell-shaped curve with a middle value and a sigma, and we located the 5.7 with a boundary of the region on the picture. So where's 5.7? Well, let's round this to 1.3. How much is 4.5 plus 1.3? So where, what is, where am I at right now? This is five, what number is right here? Roughly 5.8, so where's 5.7? A little bit to the left of that, so 5.7 should be, if you're following chapter six along, should be right over there. How do you figure out the area of a probability? Or how do you figure out a probability? You figure out the area under the curve. So we can actually see the answer in front of us if we're following, these, this, you know, following the development. So what is the answer to the question? She says it's about 20%. What's the answer according to this picture? Well, remember, what is, if, I, if I started exactly over here, which is one standard deviation, how much is to the right of this? Remember that number you're supposed to memorize? 16%. So 16 plus a little fraction over here. So what is that little fraction? 1%, 2%, 3%. So 19% or 18% is not that far from your very rough, based on only 35 numbers as opposed to 1,000 numbers. If you do it 1,000, it'll be even more exact. So the point is you can visualize the answer, and the answer should be if you're taking a, ge a lucky guess at the number, or an educated guess, you would say it's about 18%. That's my lesson. That would be an educated guess which is consistent with our experience, our limited experience, only one person doing 35 numbers here, not, not 1,000 numbers. So now the question is, how do you get the exact answer? What's the next step in this process going to be? Ra raise your hand if you want to. Mm -hmm. Yes, Laura? Well, not exactly. You're right, but not immediately. First, we're going to go to, let's do it over here. We're going to make a third picture, because how, how do you solve a problem in chapter 6? We start out with the original set of data, and then we convert it to a Z diagram, so there's two pictures. Now we're starting out with a pre now the population is new here, so it's three pictures altogether. So let's do it. So the third picture, which was the second picture in chapter six, is to write out the, the Z diagram, which always starts out like this. 
you're going to convert the 5.7 to a corresponding z-score. What is the formula for converting something, Laura? Now, x minus mu over sigma would work in this. What's the x in this case? The x is the boundary of 5.7. What is the mu in this case? The mu is the, the average of you know, this particular picture, which happens to be the same as the number over here. So it's minus 4.5. What is the sigma in this particular case, Laura? Okay, now th so the right answer is 1.28. But if somebody was doing this without thinking, what would they might? Well, what do you think a very common mistake is to put down for this number here? Sigma is originally 287. So we are able to distinguish this. What would be the better? What would be a, an update of this formula from chapter six that's more relevant from chapter seven? Yes. It's the sigma of x bar. The, the average among the x-bars, and we're really converting an x-bar. So this formula here, which looks a little bit different in chapter six, is really just upgrading chapter six to chapter seven. So we're gonna be using this formula for now on, but you could use the old formula in chapter six if you're, if you're careful about it. Of course, the next step is to do the actual calculation, which is how much? It comes out to 0.94, I believe. Anybody wanna verify that? How much is 1.2 divided by 1.28? I'm going to ask you guys to bring calculators to class. And I think I owe Laura at some point to take one of these and give one to Will, please, when you get a chance. But thank you. I'm sorry for throwing it like that. So what does the, cal what does the calculation come out to? So 0.94, remember the Z table gotta be taken out to two places, thank you very much. So now, where is 94? Well here's one, so 94 is right here. Again, for those who didn't catch chapter four, chapter six, we're reviewing chapter six essentially at this point. We want everything to the right of 94, which means I'm gonna shade it in, because if you don't have a, and then you look up 94 in the back of the Z table, which I'm not sure, you, again, you guys gotta bring the Z table to class, and by the way, in preparing for The next chapter, you gotta bring the T-table. So for those of you who are doing what you're supposed to be doing, please also Xerox the T-table to bring to class with you. But if you look up 94 in the back of the Z-table, or if you use your calculators, for those of you who would like to do this on a calculator, what's the area below 94? It looks like, like you know, like, like 20, like 80%. Whoop. Say again. 0.8264 is the area to the left of 90. Remember, the table always gives you the area to the left of it. Since we want everything to the right of it, we gotta do one final step, one minus 8264, which if I can do this in my head is point 0.1736. Am I right about that? Okay, so the final answer after all is said and done is 1736, which is not that far from Nakia's original experience or limited experience. If you understand this, you understand all of chapter seven, which is literally half of the third test.